In the second book that you mentioned, Stop America's Number One Killer, you, you went into this in more detail about uh, the dental part of it and, and what people should do. In fact, you had a three-prong approach to, to this subject, first being dental, second being diet, and then the third being a group of supplements that right. you recommended. Could you tell us a little bit about, a little bit more about the dental part of it, first of all? Well, what I discovered, if you will, in my review of the literature, uh, Dr. Linus Pauling, uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron, and Dr. Matthias Rath had published a bunch of papers that were very interesting on how when you had vitamin C deficiencies, you had loss of connective tissue, uh, you had increase in cardiovascular disease, and basically they said, and I'm, I think I can say I verified it with this book by citing the different research, that a vitamin C deficiency severe enough in your blood vessels will initiate and propagate the whole process called atherosclerosis or blockages. To use it in different words, atherosclerosis is focal arterial scurvy. Usually we think of scurvy as being an all or none phenomenon. You don't have hardly any vitamin C in your body or you have enough. Well, depending on local toxic challenges on different tissues, you can have much less vitamin C in one area of your body than another. For example, cataracts mm -hmm. represents a focal form of scurvy in which once the lens gets chronically low enough in its vitamin C and antioxidant levels, the cataracts begin to develop. Same thing with gum disease. Gum disease is a focal scurvy. As it gets more severe, you start to lose the capacity of your gums. Now, so in this book, I researched, and I didn't even know, I, I got to say this, it wasn't in my mind I had already made a conclusion about something, and now I'm going to try to make the pieces fit. I just wanted to write a good, solid book showing the research, how important vitamin C is. But as I did more and more research, I found that every one of the significant cardiovascular risk factors, and there's, I think, more than 20 cited there, mm -hmm. by one means or another, wound their way down to a final common denominator of a focal vitamin C deficiency in the mm -hmm. intima or inner arterial lining of mm -hmm. the arteries. And unless you had this pre-existing condition, any other things the risk factors had to offer were really irrelevant and beside the point. You weren't going to develop atherosclerosis until you had this primary precondition of a severe vitamin C deficiency in the arterial lining. Now, you asked about the dental toxicity and the yes. dental mm -hmm. uh, aspect. This is important because an antioxidant supplies electrons. The reason a toxin is toxic, mm -hmm. and to my knowledge, there's no exception to this rule. So think okay. about no matter how diverse mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. toxins are, mm -hmm. what a toxin does that makes it toxic is it takes electrons away. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have the antioxidant that gives electrons, you have the prooxidant or toxin that uses them up and takes them away. So, if you have an excess of toxins present in one area or one tissue, it's going to overwhelm whatever antioxidant supply there is, use up the electrons the antioxidant has to supply, and put that tissue in a state of electron deficiency. And this is the state of disease. When you have a state of electron deficiency, focal or generalized, you're going to have a state of disease focal or generalized. Now, we already knew from the mainstream literature, for example, that it was well established that people with advanced chronic gum disease, periodontitis, mm -hmm. had substantially increased risks of heart attack. Okay? Well, this is interesting because if you start analyzing the fact that with periodontal disease you have a lot of aerobic bacteria trapped in an anaerobic environment. Mm -hmm. Just like in root canals, just like in some of the toxic spots mm -hmm. after tooth extractions, notice mm -hmm. cavitations. Mm -hmm. 
And what happens with a root canal or gum disease is every time you chew, move your mouth, mm -hmm. however manipulate it, you actually express some of these toxins into the venous blood, draining mm -hmm. the area of the mouth. So you're loading and the toxin. You're loading it up directly into the blood. Mm -hmm. And it's also important to realize how potent these toxins are. There's been a lot of very elegant research done on this that has quite clearly established that in terms of the critical enzymes in the body, when these toxins have been tested against them, mm -hmm. some of these toxins are many fold more toxic than botulism toxin, which is considered by mainstream medicine really to be mm -hmm. the One premier works. most toxic toxin that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have these incredibly potent toxins in tiny amounts, but around the clock, around mm -hmm. the clock, around mm -hmm. the clock. So you have a controlled, slow release mechanism of some of the most exquisitely toxic substances known to man being released into the venous blood. Now what happens in our blood supply? The venous blood comes down to the right atrium, into the pulmonary system, out, and then back into the left atrium. So you go from the venous, and now at the left atrium, you're going to begin the arterial side. Mm -hmm. What's the first artery that these toxins encounter? And in very large quantity. 25% of your cardiac output, mm -hmm. as it pumps out, it comes back and goes into the coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. So the very first artery encountered by these toxins, not vein, the very first artery mm -hmm. is the coronary artery, mm -hmm. and in high amounts. So this is why it seems that the heart gets even more affected by this dental toxicity than other areas of the body. It will affect <clears throat> other areas of the body, but you have an exquisitely clear relationship between dental toxicity and heart disease. Now, so what happens? These toxins, they flow out into the coronary artery. They get deposited in the intima, the inner lining. And once they get set up there, they start metabolizing and oxidizing all the vitamin C and other antioxidants that are present. Mm 